There's a whole world of people out there that need a vision from God. They need to understand God's created purpose for their life. Do you guys remember when you started discovering God's created purpose for your life? Do you remember when that happened, when that light bulb came on and you said, you know what, I'm not just making my way through. God actually has a specific plan and a specific purpose for my life to be accomplished. Amen? Now, most of you have heard my testimony, but I'm going to just kind of recap it a little bit. I was not raised in a Christian family. Really amazing, great parents um, who are still alive today. My dad's getting ready to turn 88. My mom's 84. They're in great health. They just came down to visit. It's awesome to see them. But both of my parents were not raised in the church. Neither one of them come from families that were believers. As a matter of fact, I think I'm the first born-again believer on either side of my family line. No believers in my whole family line. My parents were scientists, and they were agnostic scientists. So going to church or quote-unquote religion was kind of belittled and made fun of, especially by my dad. Okay? It was, a, it was a crutch for weak people or all kinds of other crazy things that he said. All right? But when I was five years old, um, I had a, a situation where one of my little friends that I played with in my neighborhood got very sick over a weekend and suddenly died. You can imagine as a five-year-old, that's pretty traumatic to learn that a friend of yours has died. And so it put a lot of fear inside of me. And I didn't know what to do with all these emotions that I was feeling because we were, I had three brothers and crying was discouraged, teased, okay? And so I went into my room by myself. I got down on my knees because I had seen, it, I had seen this in a popular television program of that era, the 1960s, and it was called The Flying Nun. How many remember The Flying Nun? Okay, everyone that raised your hand just showed how old you are, okay? The Flying Nun, Sally Fields played this little nun that would always get herself in trouble, and um, she would end up flying at some point during the program. But always at every program, she would find this time, she would go in, she would get down on her knees, she would fold her hands, and she would look up to Jesus on the cross. She would tell him her problems, and he would miraculously help her to solve the issue. How many remember? Basically, that was the plot from every single Flying Nun episode. Okay? So this was my whole understanding of relating to God. Sally Fields was my spiritual mentor. Okay? She's probably horrified by that. Okay? But she was my spiritual mentor. So I went into my room that day. I got down on my knees, folded my hands, looked up at the window, because I didn't have a cross in my room. And I began to pour out my heart and tell God what I was going through with all these emotions. And the presence of the Lord came down in my room and wrapped himself around me like a big hug. And I suddenly knew God was real. God responded to my prayer. And at that time, I would pray, God, I don't ever want to have to die. God, I don't ever want my parents or my family to ever have to die. Lord, let us live forever. Then usually I would stop and I would pray for Elvis Presley because I was madly in love with Elvis Presley, okay? Full disclosure, okay? <laughs> I had a major crush on Elvis Presley and I would pray for him. He probably really needed my prayers, okay? But it wasn't until much later that I actually realized, you know what, I didn't have a praying grandma. I didn't have a praying aunt or uncle. I didn't have anybody in my family praying for me. So you know what the Lord showed me years later? He showed me what I was actually doing there was I was interceding for eternal life. Now, every night from that point forward, I went in my room and got down on my knees and prayed. When I was eight years old, a, friend taught, a friend's mother taught me how to pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, and that helped me to develop and structure my prayer life. When I was 10 years old, I found, I found a family Bible. You know what a family Bible is? It's a Bible that comes with encyclopedias. Okay, for the younger generation, an encyclopedia is these books that you would put on a shelf. Okay, because I know they, they have, it's Google in book form, okay? 
And usually whenever you would buy an encyclopedia set, they had this gigantic Bible that would come with it, you know, weighed about 20 pounds. How many of you had these in your house growing up, okay? And they would write marriages and deaths and everything in, in this Bible. Well, I found a family Bible in our bookshelf, and so I hauled it off to my room. Now, this was old King James, these and thous and yees and all that. But I started reading in Genesis. I read Genesis. It was pretty exciting. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in Genesis. Then I read Exodus. <laughs> that was super cool. I mean, the parting of the Red Sea and the ten plagues. and Man, that was a lot of stuff. And then I got to Leviticus. And I thought, I must have missed something. I don't understand this book, okay? And so I kind of got bored reading Leviticus. And so I started skipping around, and I found this awesome book called the Book of Psalms, which was a book full of prayers that were written mostly by this guy named David. So I just started living in the Psalms. I started memorizing Psalms. Now, I'm not saved. I don't understand the plan of salvation. I'm not super clear who Jesus is, but what did I know? I knew that there was something in me that longed to know this God. And so I kept seeking. I memorized Psalms. I would pray. I was spending time memorizing. I had a whole notebook of scriptures that I'd memorized, and I wasn't even saved. I didn't get saved till I was 14 years old. When I was 12, um, there was this program that came on uh, television one night, and, um, and, and I watched it. It was called The Late Great Planet Earth. How many remember this? It was something written by Hal Lindsey. It was all about the end times, Mark of the Bees, 666, all of this stuff scared the living daylights out of me. But at the end of the program, they still didn't tell us how to get saved. So I just laid in bed that night shaking from head to toe, and I started bargaining with God. You know how we bargain with God? This is when we don't understand salvation. We start bargaining with God, and this is what I said. I said, okay, God, I'm going to get rid of all the sin in my life. I am going to stop cussing. I'm going to stop beating up my brothers because I was tough, and I'm going to stop shoplifting. These were my 12-year-old sins, okay? And, Lord, I hope that's enough so that whenever all this bad stuff happens, You'll save me from it. How many understand that's what we do? We, we try to clean ourselves up and come to God. When instead he says, come to me and I'll clean you up. So I got saved when I was 14, got baptized. And then two years later, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this is why I told you that whole story. It's because at the age of 16, I was praying in my room one day. I was a Baptist. I was going to a Baptist church. I love the Baptists. They laid such an amazing foundation. But they didn't really understand God speaking at that point. They didn't really understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which I was praying in my prayer language. And, and so, so as I was praying this one day, God spoke to me in an audible voice. Now, nobody told me that God could speak to you, but he did anyway. And this is what he said. He said, Jane, the plans that you've made for your life are not the plans I've made for your life. Instead of going to that college, I already had a full ride scholarship in Arkansas, roommates picked out and everything. Instead of going to that college, I'm going to send you to Bible college. Great, my parents are going to love this, okay? And when you get there, you're going to meet a man. And I, I, sorry, I always forget that part. Yes, a handsome, anointed man, that's right. Who will have a birthday in October? That's right. Yes. Okay. I forgot all that part. Yeah. All right. When you get there, you're going to meet a man, and you're going to get married young, and I'm going to thrust you into the ministry. And you'll travel the nations of the world, and sometimes he'll preach, and sometimes you'll preach because I'm going to make you a teen. Now, understand this. I didn't even know that God would speak to people, and here he is laying out my whole life. And then he says, I'm going to be preaching. I'd never seen a woman preach. I never even heard of a woman preacher. He said, and you're going to be a team with your husband. And I said, Lord, can you show me somebody that's doing what I'm going to be doing so that I'll understand what you're talking about? And he said, there's nobody doing now what you'll be doing then because I'm going to be doing a new thing. How many understand we're living in the day of the new thing? Amen. So I went off to Bible college. I met him my first day on campus, the handsome anointed man with his birthday in October. Um, 
and we got married two years later. We started our first church two months after we were married. He was 21, I was 19. I still pray for those poor people because we had no idea what we were doing. And then we came here to Florida and we started this church 35 years ago. And we're a team in ministry and we travel the nations of the world. We've been to 65 nations now. Sometimes he preaches, sometimes I preach. Can you see how God just unveils his purposes and plans? Now, maybe God hasn't been that specific with you, but I'm telling you, I needed a specific word from God in order for me to change the entire trajectory of my life.